Hey everyone, Lance here. Um, if you just finished uh, the other uh, Windows 10 IoT video, that was how to take your Raspberry Pi image uh, that Microsoft provided and put it onto your micro SD card. This video we're going to show you how to uh, basically add the host to your Raspberry Pi as a uh, trusted host for um, uh, Windows remote management. So let's go ahead and do this in PowerShell real quick. So first thing I'm going to use uh, Cortana to run this sucker. So we'll go ahead and type in uh, PowerShell and she should automatically start finding it run it as administrator that is extremely important otherwise you will get nowhere now if you have UAC it'll say you need to accept it so in a second as you see we have PS which means we're in the PowerShell so in my case I have uh, the system already started so I'm gonna go ahead just to really quickly uh, shut off my uh, Windows remote management so what you'll be doing is uh, so what you'll do is net start win rm. Okay, it started. So what we need to do now is add that Raspberry Pi IP address into our uh, trusted host. Now, if you don't remember what it was offhand from the other video, uh, go into your Windows uh, uh, IoT Core Watcher, as you see here. So we know that's the IP address. We know it's active. The last ping was 543, uh, which is uh, true on my side. So let's go ahead and do set item and I, oops, I should have done uh, IT, oops, IT tab like that. And then WS uh, man like that. And then we're going to save for our local, oops, local host um, client. We're going to allow uh, trusted hosts uh, where everything will be. Uh, stored and then dash value and then our raspberry pi ip so 192.168.1.112 and again that's that guy right there go ahead and hit enter and now this will come up uh, security are we going to allow it yes we need to so uh, capital y for yes and now it's done, right? So Microsoft mentioned that there's a Stack Overflow uh, issue with the PS read line. So let's go ahead and remove it like they suggest. So we'll do remove uh, module and then PS read line and then force it. And now it's gone. So we shouldn't have that issue. But before you can communicate from Visual Studio to your Raspberry Pi, um, which is what you're going to want to do if you're using Visual Studio to connect your Pi and run your apps and whatnot. That includes your Blinky apps or weather, etc. Whatever you're doing in it uh, through uh, anything, really. Um, you need to go ahead and start a session. Now, you can always turn this off later. Um, now, if you're like me, constantly developing, you'll probably make a bat file to keep this going all the time. But uh, enough talking, so let's go ahead and do uh, enter PowerShell session, uh, computer name, um, and that's going to be 192.168.1.112. Again, that's the Raspberry Pi IP address. It is online. Then we'll do slash uh, credential. Um, and then it's going to be local host. Now, you could use your computer name or whatever. I'm just doing local host. And then administrator. And now we're prompted for a uh, credential request. And in this case, if you haven't changed it, um, which in another video, we'll make a video to teach you how to change your administrator password on your Pi. Uh, we'll go ahead, uh, but that's later on. So P, the at sign, SSW0RD. Go ahead and hit OK. Now, right now, what it's going to be doing is communicating to my Raspberry Pi to initiate a session um, to save it. So then in Visual Studio, I will later be able to go in and use uh, my Pi to remotely uh, debug and uh, throw apps to and whatnot. So this is going to take a few moments. Don't be scared. This takes a moment and voila, uh, we are there. We are now connected to our Raspberry Pi. So that is great news. Um, um, so yeah. So now you might be asking, well, what can we do on here? Well, you could do a lot of stuff. You could check out in Microsoft what to do. Um, but uh, for instance, let's say we go ahead and type tlist, right? This should show us everything that's running on our Raspberry Pi. Those are all the processes running currently on our Pi, as you see. Um, let's say you wanted to know the host name, type host name, as you see there. That's a default, min, win, PC. Now, should you want to change this, um, which we could go ahead and do, uh, you could do something like set computer 
uh, C-O-M-P U-T-R if I could spell it computer name um, and then whatever we want to call it so I'm gonna call mine uh, Lance's Pi right okay so now we need to shut down so shut down R minus T is zero um, so as you see the old name was Minwin PC now it's going to be Lance's Pi so we'll go ahead and hit enter We'll be shutting down right now. Check out your Pi. It should start flashing in a moment. Connection should be uh, rebooting. And as you see, your Pi is no longer online, as you see. In a few moments, this should actually come up with a whole new board name, um, and it should have the check mark meaning it's online. So let's go ahead and wait a moment. And now as long as, depending on how you set this up, um, as long as uh, you're not having another IP address on your network that's going to obtain that uh, while your Pi restarts, you should be good. Um, but in this case, we're using our uh, PC uh, and sharing our connection uh, via the Wi-Fi adapter uh, so our Raspberry Pi has internet. So um, I'm not too worried. Uh, I feel very confident that it's going to come back with the same IP address. Um, if not, then we re rerun the process, <laughs> but um, otherwise we should be okay. But uh, let's go ahead and wait for this to come back up. Again, old name, WinPC. Uh, I'm sorry, MinWinPC. So in a second, this should pop back up, um, hopefully. <laughs> Today, this up, there we go, Lance's Pi. And as you see, it's right there. Last uh, ping, 5.50.03 p.m., it's online. Do we believe it? Let's go ahead and check. So we could go ahead and Telenet here. I don't think my computer by default has Telenet, but let's see. Um, no, I don't think we do. Um, but we can copy the IP address and open network share, blah, blah, blah. We could double check, make sure it's true, open the browser. And uh, looks like it's working again, right? So uh, that's the good news here. It does seem to be working. Um, that's terrific, and as you see, it is online, working. Uh, let's go ahead and do a T list. Oh, the connection's broken, right? So do you remember what you can do? Just hit, uh, let's go ahead and do that, start our session. Go ahead and type in the password. So P at sign SSW0RD, and this should give our uh, session again. And now you would be able to go back into Visual Studio and start uh, exporting your apps to this. Um, and as you see again here, it is online, it is active, um, we know it works, we just went into the uh, web control panel. So again, this takes some time to get a PowerShell connection. Uh, so you might want to do this automatically when your computer starts. And again, you could create a uh, batch file to do this automatically, should you want to. Um, someone like me, I'm most likely going to. And as you see, we're back in. So how do we know? Go ahead and type host name. And voila, we're in Lance's Pi, right? So, the other thing, uh, let's go ahead and see all the processes running. 